Okay, so this this entire topic is just so funny. It's it's such a funny topic, and the, the reason why it's funny is because well, the topic is imaginary people in acting, right? Why why are why would you possibly want to spend time working on imaginary people in acting? I'm going to tell you something. It's very surprising, but this is absolutely an important thing that you want to consider adding to your acting because you you don't know when somebody's going to start to tell you oh by the way you know you've got this uh, evil uncle or evil aunt and uh, they're uh, in the script and here I want you to read this and uh, all of a sudden you go over to somebody's house or they'll they call you and say let's go to the theater pick your friend up from the theater and the next thing you know you're being given a script and being told to read something for an audition you didn't know it was there it happens so the thing is, is, is that imaginary people, you know, um, you know, look, let's, let's put this into context. Writers, writers absolutely have this affection for the character development of the, the, who's it, what's in their script, right? They, they have this incredible they, they literally will fall in love with these characters all the different quirks and and all the different things about the characters that they think that they could do and then they try to be able to find you know the descriptions of, of some of the people or a lot of times in the highest and the higher higher levels of, of the film industry there a lot of these times these the writers are writing for specific people for about maybe I'd say about 30% of the cast, maybe 35, sometimes more. And they'll write for those specific people, knowing already, or the writer will spend time with the actor, and then they'll start writing down the actor's quirks or, or what it is that they actually uh, do or how their mannerisms actually are, right? Well, look, here's the thing. That's all very nice, and there's a lot of reality to that, and there's a lot of good things that can come from that in acting, right? And those are all good, valid techniques. But you're, if you're an individual actor and you're looking for an ability to try and improve yourself and your technique and your, uh, your, uh, your, your, lively, your, your liveliness in acting, well, you want to be able to develop these things called imaginary people in acting, which are, are basically... see. Uh, there's this whole construct of emotional preparation, which is the ability to be able to find an emotion, activate it, and then have it alive. It spurs up. It, something's alive in you. And all of a sudden, this flood, gush of emotion. Not like flirty feelings, although that can be sometimes part of it, of course. But a lot of times, these things that are a little bit more like deeper feelings, they, they really are, are solid emotions, and they just start... They start like gushing out of you and there's this stuff that's starting to work and then that goes into your acting and those are the times in your acting where people go wow that acting was so amazing there are these programs that i use and i use these programs to do these things like cartoons to be able to accentuate to to ex to absolutely um, amplify the emotions that I go through. And when I go through emotions, first of all, I absolutely emotionally prepare, sometimes even before the videos, because I, I love emotional preparation. I love to be able to get myself upset about one thing, get myself upset about another, and then put that into some imaginary work. And these cartoons, there's links in the descriptions below, and they can absolutely, they can amplify those expressions that you can learn to be able to get with your talent. Okay, so feel free, use those links because there is all this chemistry that just came out because there was emotional preparation and there were people listening and there was interaction and it was really believable because all of a sudden you were involved by being able to put these real emotions in this entire imaginary world, right? This imaginary acting world, you were successful in being able to put real life stimulus inside of which is the process of emotional preparation. So if we go a step further with our acting and we start working with imaginary people and start realizing, look, you know, there's like um, the irate aunt. Um, there's, uh, there's a uh, uh, disobedient boss that's always breaking the rules or um, doing nefarious things. 
there's um, uh, parts that are constant, you know? There's the ex-wife. There's the wife. There's the husband. There's the ex-husband. You know, these are all sorts of imaginary people that you obviously are doing this for your acting, right? We're looking at techniques and discussing the possibilities of understanding that imaginary, going into your imagination and developing these types of stereotypes for your acting can be very, very, very powerful tool. Because when you're given the material, you'll be able to instantly go, yep, yeah, I know this, I know that, I know some of these things inside of myself. Because you do emotional preparations and build out your paperwork, right? This uh, uh, ex-husband has this quality, this quality, this quality. You know, uh, this ex ex um, wife has this quality, this quality, and this quality. You're able to, to then determine, and you're able to then practice stimulated emotional activation with that imaginary construction. There are links in that description that you could actually use to improve your acting. You can help. To, it can help you to improve your creativity. So there are, are um, independent activities, there are reasons at the door, there's lists of programs, there's um, lists of emotions, there's programs that you can do, and there's also ways that you can actually contact me for private coaching. So listen, please do yourself a favor and check that out, you know, right down there in the description box. This is extremely valuable in terms of the ability for you to be able to practice this and how it relates to being able to absolutely, <clears throat> with absolute ease, step in and step through the veil of the imaginary world of the curtain of the imaginary circumstance. It's just that simple. The more time you spend and the more ingredients and the bigger amounts of things within your actor's toolbox that you have, the, the better it is. So it's great that some people will say, well, look, we study, we work with the emotional preparations for uh, uh, imaginational daydreaming. Great. Have you developed your own, um, uh, what is it, step, st wicked stepmother? Do you have your own wicked stepmother in your acting toolbox? Do, do you have somebody like that? Do you have a sister? Do you have a brother? Do you have um, relationships like this that we're building out? What type of imaginary people do you have that you can readily go in to an emotional preparation based on what you've already built out? So this is kind of bridging the gap here between, you know, performance-based acting and actually being able to confidently with a lot of ease just simply okay this is the part okay we understand that all right we know how to do an activation for the overall material and by the way we have a wicked um, stepmother that we already have done work on and it may be different than the person cast but will, will give us a it will give us a starting point to work for the project Hi, I'm inviting you to actually join me live on the internet. And uh, if you would, you can bring your own emotional preparation. We can work on emotional preparation together and we can really hone down and help build out that talent with inside of you. Now, even if all it is, is you wanna just bring an emotional preparation, do a spoon river, I don't mind. Come, join us and absolutely practice the talent of your own acting. Now, I'm telling you, this is, there is very few rules in this industry. And most of the rules are consistently broken. <laughs> and the thing is, and, and I mean that in a good and a bad way, there's a lot of good things about this industry. And obviously, I really like acting. But the reality is, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. And how to be able to break through all of that stuff 
that does go on in a way that will able to be able to bring your talent actually into those imaginary circumstances where you've gotten past all of the politics and anything else that's needed or to be able to get past and you're literally now just working as an actor under the imaginary world or an imaginary conditions then you're you're able to build these things out for yourself so look if you're overlooking well, first of all, if you could boop the like button, that would be appreciated. If you can let me know the type of imaginary people that you think would be important for you to create. It might be a mean boss. That might be something that one day, you know, you got the afternoon, you're not sure what to do with it. You know you're working on all kinds of stuff. Well, why not? <laughs> Sit down, write an exercise out for yourself, go into some daydreaming, and imagine what a, a grumpy boss might be like. Is it male? Is it female? What, what activates you more? Is it, is it somebody that's into uh, whatever the situation? You know, what, what's something, and, and a good ingredient is an ingredient that's going to activate your emotions. A good ingredient is, and this is the why, this is why we construct these things. See, we're constructing imaginary people for our own talent, for our ability to then be able to know that we have access to ourselves and our talent's going to pour out during our acting. What this means is that our talent is going to pour out well and when we're activated that is acting is activation acting is activation it's just no simpler than that so we are working on techniques to be able to do the bean side of the work and research and other preparational work so that we have that stuff already set up for ourselves if somebody says to me you know oh gosh i mean they could say you know you're uh in some spy movie and they've released some sort of uh, fake news on North Country and uh, um, uh, it's because they want to put satellites up in the in the air and they don't want to let the government know about it. I'd be like, oh, that's the script. Okay, do I have any materials on anything that I could say or do to be able to work on that? Well, as a matter of fact, yeah, I do. I, I've done some imaginary work. I have real experiences in certain things, whatever it is, and I, I got, can mix those things up for myself in this imaginary world and, and create something that I could go in and do some spy thriller movie where I'm trying to release an email address publicly that, that nobody knows that that's what's going on. And that would be obviously what's part of the script. So these are the kinds of things that, that are, are active uh, that you have the ability to do so really I absolutely encourage you to be able to work with your talents and not to forget about the ability of how you can actually construct imaginary people to be able to use as as activations with your emotional preparations and then all of a sudden, it's so, it's so simple. You've done a lot of the work. All you have to do is activate it, reactivate it. And then you can enter into this world of this imaginary circumstance and then be activated with all the stuff that you have open. So this, you know, open within yourself. So this is a very, 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 very vital talk for you. It might really open up an incredible amount of things for your talent. And... Uh, Please, you know, um, let me know what else I could do and what other things I could explain and exercises. Um, at every single level, I've seen tons of different stuff from famous people to none. And I've seen hundreds and hundreds of people. And, and there's so much stuff I could say, it doesn't make a difference. So here's the thing is absolutely uh, uh, help yourself out and, and, and tell me what it is that you actually need. And I'll be able to help you out. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, so I teach people how to get upset. I have a lot of fun teaching people how to literally purposefully upset themselves, actually waking their own activations up so that they're emotionally activated. There's something that they can get upset about within a ballpark of emotion. But the key, the absolute key, is I don't want you to carry around that stuff in your life. That's what's called acting baggage. 
you want to be able to learn a technique. I have to be able to tell you that it's, it would be a disservice for me to teach you all of these incredible techniques on how to access yourself as an artist without reminding you very nicely that you don't need your acting baggage in life. So feel free, work on processes where you have a release time after you're doing your acting. And what this will do is it will actually amplify your work because it will give your acting muscles the break that they need in order to get the rest that they need so that your work will be even stronger. Okay, thanks very much.